I'm going to go over there. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is Cambridge Inside Out. My name is Susanna Sagat. And I'm Robert Winters. Welcome, Robert. And for our second half hour today, we continue to have our good friend Gavin Cleesby's. Um, Let me just say, Gavin is the executive director of the Cambridge Historical Society. 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 <laughs> Not the Cambridge Historical, Historical Commission. Commission. Right. It's true. <laughs> All right. Now, Susanna, you had a few things you wanted well, to say. Well, I just want to point out, because it's March. Hmm? You know what March is. Madness. No. <laughs> March is Women's History Month. Okay. It's the one month that's not a Men's History Month. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that quieted them down. There you go. <laughs> so I was just going to um, the, you know, Cambridge has a Women's Commission, and I mm -hmm. figure where else to find out news about what's happening on Women's History Month than the Cambridge Women's Commission. They've got a really great set of profiles of individual women in Cambridge history. They oh, yeah, do? The Women's History Project is very women's cool. Women's History Project. Yeah. I've used it many times. Excellent. So uh, do we just want to point out to you some events happening this month? So I'm going to go into our fancy thing here. Oh, my God. So uh, there's an event, March 6th. Oh, you can't see it. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Here we go. Anyway, <clears throat> what I've noticed is that a lot of these events are not really good for working women. They're because they tend to be during the day and during the week. So uh, there's stuff happening in the senior center on March 6th. There's stuff happening in City Hall on March 6th and 7th. Uh, Which have already passed. Yeah, so don't go there. Don't go there then unless you can go back there's in There's a breakfast Friday. We, we already did that. Okay, so there's some history walks in Cambridge Port and Mid Cambridge on the 12th and the 19th, next, tomorrow and next Wednesday. And the big event on Thursday, March 20th at 6.30 p.m. in our very most favorite library, the Cambridge Public Library, the main branch, a moment in her story, documentary screening in discussion with filmmaker Catherine Russo. That will be a fun event. So if you, oh, not gonna happen there. So Thursday, March 20th is a big to-do about Women's History Month. Be there. Be there. Back right. to you. All right, all right. Oh, oh, I feel whole again. <laughs> <laughs> now, Gavin here is trying to tweet out that he's on the show. And so, failing miserably. And he's failing miserably. But even the Cambridge Historical Society has a tweet address. So if you want to get news from Gavin, it's at Cambridge HS. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, we spent the, the first half hour primarily focusing on one of the more interesting and, I dare say, entertaining aspects <laughs> of uh, the last 125 years. Well, temperance in particular. The temperance Not movement and how it led to, uh, arguably, led to much of the civic reforms that we then enjoyed in the 20th century and now the 21st century. Now, are you bringing this up because of all the pot shops coming up? Is that a discussion related? <laughs> oh, so no. I thought it was because of the whole extension of the, oh, the license being open until 3.30. No, or we're trying right? to figure no, out no, why we're no, doing no, the subject no, today. It's just, this is just a personal obsession of mine. <laughs> I have to confess. There you have and it. And I appreciate your all tolerance. <laughs> Thank you very now much. Now you understand the method to our madness. Right. The, it was the Cambridge idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but Gavin, as executive director for the Cambridge Historical Society, may be able to shed some light on some of the other things that the Historical Society does and the reason why you should become a member. Well, before that, can I just show them your web page? Sure. Okay. Back to? <clears throat> Back to the machines. <laughs> okay. So if you go on cambridgehistory.org, which is your web page, right. cambridgehistory.org. Well, if you go into library and archives, mm -hmm. this and is the neat thing here. It's called digital collections. Mm -hmm. See if I can make it bigger. Right. And I know that uh, Gavin spent a lot of time and effort trying to digitize a lot of our history. Right. And, there are, and I'm sure it's still happening, but these are some of the things you have. So this is a rich collection of very interesting documents that you can have total access to if you have the I'm internet. noticing the, the, the I, postcard collection. I'm a, I, I collect old Cambridge postcards yeah. myself. I, I imagine we've bid against each other on eBay. In the Probably first. have. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a bad habit of mine. But, so there yeah. you um, see. This actually, if we go back to the digital collections, this is actually yes. very appropriate for this month. Okay. Uh, if you'll notice, so we 
Uh, we had two grants from the IMLS, which is the Institute for Museum and Library Services, which is a federal agency, uh, both of which were backed by local donors uh, in matching funds. Um, and with that money, we digitized our image collection. And then we also used the money to digitize the collection of three prominent women in Cambridge history. Um, the well, first, Well, the first is Lois Lily Howe. And she was the first successful female architect in America. Not the first female architect, but the first successful one who ran her own practice oops, for, uh, not used to Max, uh, ran her own practice for 30 something years with over 300 commissions in the Cambridge, Boston area. Um, and this is primarily her photo collection, uh, but it's just tons and tons of photos. She was very active with uh, um, uh, old Cambridge photographic uh, club, and she took just hundreds and hundreds of photos of houses, and these are all, many of these are uh, in Cambridge. This house right here is on Brattle Street. Um, what's the approximate year? Oh, I'm sorry, it says 128 Cambridge Street. Uh, what, what's the approximate years? Yeah, what period, more or less? Beginning of the 20th century. Okay. Like very See, end of the 19th MD, century. MD, don't know. Don't know. <laughs> so there, there, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of unknown age. dates, but uh, many of these were buildings that she worked on. Uh, some were ones that she was just interested in. Some were uh, just, you know, there's the Cooper Frost Austin House on Linnean Street. Um, buildings that she was interested in studying. Beautiful. Um, so this is all available digitally on our website. Uh, she also took lots of pictures of people, some of which are kind of funny, um, some of which are, are kind of poignant. Um, and so these are all uh, available on our website. 1898. Right, 1890s. so it's all sort of the turn of the century. Uh, and some of them are really quite haunting in some ways, uh, but quite beautiful. This is actually kind of funny. This is the, the family that droppers, uh, but the little kid keeps dropping things. I don't know if that was <laughs> at all intentional. There's one, there's a kid. It's not right. really dropping so much wow. as, as hurling. <laughs> well, look at that. The, he's throwing that. Right. So for the That's photo at the good. time, it was clearly not planned. Beautiful. You, you couldn't Great. plan that. Um, but so other than the Lois Lily Howe collection, uh, we also digitized uh, the Sarah Bull collection. And who was she? <clears throat> so Sarah Bull was the daughter of a lumber magnate in uh, Wisconsin. And she met at a concert a Norwegian violin prodigy uh, whose name was Ole Bull. Uh, Ole Bull and her were married. They actually had to be married in Europe because it was so scandalous. The age difference was hey, so oh, large. Oh, look, Women's Christian Temperance. Yeah. And she spent uh, the next 15, 20 years of her life traveling around the world with Ole Bull. And he was, he was a superstar of his time. So she met uh, you know, leaders throughout Europe, princes, kings. Uh, Ole Bull celebrated his 60th birthday by playing a concert from the top of the Great Pyramid in Egypt. Wow. Uh, which I think today they don't actually like really let people do that anymore. Um, so he had a real flair for showmanship. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned, there was a huge disparity in their ages. So uh, Ole Bull died long before Sarah. Um, and after his death, she moved to Cambridge and uh, eventually rented uh, Elmwood. Um, eventually, uh, her father moved his entire family to Cambridge. And they built um, a house for Sarah Bull, which is still standing on Brattle Street today. Um, and her family sort of intermarried with the sort of hoi polloi of Cambridge at the time. Um, and she became very interesting. She um, later in life became fascinated with, with mysticism and Eastern religion. Uh, and at the end of her life actually converted to Hinduism. Um, and she, among other things, is credited with introducing yoga to America. Really? No. So of, of all the things you didn't know, yoga came from Cambridge. <laughs> Oh, sort of that, indirectly. that is big news. <clears throat> we are, we that, are the coolest. That is very really big news. <laughs> uh, and then so the, the, the final collection um, was the Mercy Scully papers. And Mercy Scully was engaged. Is this uh, any relation to the Scully Square? I don't think Same so. Same spelling. Could be. Yeah. Uh, she was, I know a lot less about Mercy Scully. She was actually engaged to be married uh, to a general who fought in the Battle of Bunker Hill and died from wounds suffered during the Battle of Bunker Hill. So they were engaged, never married. Um, and so her story is a lot sadder. Uh, it's mostly her sort of chasing after uh, the uh, inheritance that would have become hers had she actually married him, uh, but instead sort of was left sort of on 
relatively uncomfortable circumstances. If she had married him, she would have had an inheritance? <clears throat> she would have had his money. She would have wow. been wow. the heir to his estate. Really? Uh, instead, she recently, ended up like partially she... raising his children from a former marriage, but never actually having legal control. So it was, it's, a, it's a much more complicated story, but it's a collection I'm less familiar with. Right. We also have postcards and photographs, which are right, not let's... complicated at all. <laughs> let's 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 get back to the humans. That's fantastic. So this is cambridgehistory.org. And, and if you're go going exploring. if you're right here, Library mm -hmm. and Archives, the digital collection. Right. Yeah. And right below it is the proceedings. And what's the proceedings? So the proceedings was a journal printed by the Historical Society that we've digitized and this has been done entirely by volunteers. So it is a huge amount of work. It's taken us years to do this. Is it complete now? Uh, everything has been digitized. It's not all online. But the thir first 35 volumes are online okay. and fully searchable. Uh, so the article that I mentioned about uh, Frank by Frank Foxcroft about uh, the no license movement, you can just read that online. Oh, um, right. And you can down download it. You can print it out. You can do whatever you like. I know what I'll be doing later. <laughs> <laughs> and there's uh, Ch Charles Eliot Norton. There he Reminiscences is. There, of, old of Old Cambridge. Cambridge absolutely. Um, and and with so then these, you have an article here. Right. So with these, we uh, also maintained the page break. So if you scroll down, you can see that the page numbers yeah. are there. Um, and that's so if anyone happens to have the index for them, the index still relates to it the works. right pages. Yeah. Uh, although we didn't do the you know, sort of more expensive version where you would actually put up a facsimile of the actual page. Right. So. Now, in recent years, wonderful. I think is it is it in the summertime? I only say that because of the ice cream. <laughs> but um, Cambridge Historical Society also sponsors these events where people bring in perhaps more modern day photographs and whatever. <laughs> Actually, can we just sort of get back on? All right, I don't fine. know. Actually, to... I'll do that. <laughs> We're back. I was right. happy reading that. Oh, oh, I feel so much better. Uh, uh, we're people uh, we're bringing ordinary day-to-day -day photos. I mean, that's that's a tremendously rich mm -hmm. source. Of, there are people. I mean, I've noticed photographs that I took down around Kendall Square uh, in the 80s, and mm -hmm. I didn't even think of them as particularly consequential. And then when I started looking at the negatives a, a year or so ago, I said, wow, these are important. Mm -hmm. All these buildings have changed and whatever. And, and they've, actually, they've actually shown up in publications now. <laughs> um, you know, things that I didn't even think of were all that important, but over time, they actually became important. No, it's, it's an amazing project. So we, uh, we started this about five years ago. Um, and for quite a long time, there's been a program called um, Cambridge Discovery Days. Uh, which yeah. is a citywide program where there are walking tours uh, in different neighborhoods. And we do walking tours every year with the Cambridge Discovery Days. I enjoy um, those a lot. And as is a that part once of that, a year? Yeah, it's, uh, in the past it's been in July. So it's um, successive weekends, is it? It has been. This, I think this year it will probably actually be moved into September. Okay. Uh, and it will probably only be one weekend this year. All right. Um, but So it's been evolving over the years. But... Um, so we've done a whole series of walking tours. Our, our tour that we did last year was great, actually. It was called um, Cambridge Through the Pages, and it was sites in Cambridge that appear in works of fiction. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was you know, historic from, you know, the, the Lars Anderson Bridge uh, appears in uh, the, the novel The Sound and the Fury, and yeah. there's all sorts of different, like, That's you know, fantastic. pieces. So, you know, you can sort of piece together how Cambridge has been important nationally, uh, you know, from Faulkner to Juno Diaz, you know, all the way up until yep. very recent stuff. Um, but as we were doing this project with the tours, we thought, well, we can do something more if this is a big citywide event and there's a whole bunch of people who are knowing, uh, you know, receiving media about this. Uh, so we also started a program where um, I went to uh, Gus Orangatori from Toscanini's and yeah. I said, hey, Gus, I've got this great idea. Uh, and I want to get people to bring photos, and I want to give them something to make it worth their while. And would you donate some ice cream? Uh, and Gus very generously said yes, and gave us a hundred scoops of ice cream. Yeah. Uh, and so every year he's very year, good at that. He he's is. really he's community guy. minded. Gus is a great guy. Really community minded. So uh, every year for the past five years, we've run a program where if you have a photo that was taken in Cambridge, you bring it to the Historical Society. We'll scan it. We'll give you back the original, and we'll give you a free scoop of ice cream for your effort. Wow. Um, and it's not like a coupon for. A free scoop of ice cream like it's the real scoop you know we'll even give yeah. you a spoon when are you doing this uh so this year the discovery days are going to be in september and oh we for might, discovery day yeah we might you know we might keep doing it in july or we might push it back to september but. i mean there are some really uh, uh just ordinary family photos yeah. you know especially ones that you can actually sort of see pieces of cambridge in the photos but it, it's all good <laughs> and it's phenomenal stuff i mean things yeah. that you would you would 
I mean, pictures of Elsie's Diner in Harvard Square. For example, I mean, yeah. it's easy, you know, people remember <clears throat> Elsie's and it's like, wow, you know, just actually see a photo of it. Or one person brought in a photo of the of the dump that's now Danahee Park. That, those those are hard to get. Oh, I, that was amazing. Really I, I have get. some, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. these are great things. That, like, stuff people went by, you know, year after year. And they yeah, didn't think, oh, who would yeah, photograph but, that? But once yeah. it's gone, you say, oh, geez, I wish we had a well, photo of that. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that. When the millennium came when the year 2000 came we all were thinking oh we should save something from the year yeah. 2000 it's like no you should save <laughs> something from the year 1999 okay actually one of the greatest things, it was a i forget the name of the person but it was an mit uh, professor in architecture whatever just did this methodical going down through central square and uh, mm -hmm. various other places in cambridge and just took these really high resolution black and white photos right. that are part of one of the collections at right. mit and they're incredible right. Right and and at the time people would said ah it's just another building front just another building front yeah. but many of these buildings it are gone or radically changed right. but they're high quality great stuff we've done sort of uh, kind of similar but except the opposite like low quality crap <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, MIT every year has a program called uh, City Days yeah. where they ask incoming freshmen to spend the day volunteering with a nonprofit. Uh, and they contacted us um, a couple of years ago and they said, you know, in the past you've had the MIT students do garden work for the society and do you have any projects? And I thought, MIT students doing garden work, this is not using the skill set that we have access right. to. Why don't we figure out a way to use, you know, the spe specific skills that we might have? Uh, and what we started doing is um, just taking a map of the city of Cambridge and gridding it off uh, and dividing it into sort of bite-sized pieces. And every year asking 30 MIT students to show up with digital cameras and partner Capture up it. with another person and they walk down the street and one person fills out a form and it's like the most basic technology. Like it's yep. just a series of forms with unique identifier numbers. Yeah. One person fills out the form, the other person photographs the form and then photographs the building. And as long as you keep them in, in yeah. order, you have a, a thing. And we've now photographed probably I don't know, three-fifths of, of every building in the city That's in the last great. five years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the things that people don't think about in the moment, but it's so, I'm so glad that some folks <laughs> are Well, the project that it. I want to do is I want to get a map and I want to photograph all of the uh, square signs. Oh. Actually, this there was a, a, was a city council order from David Marr a few years ago that actually said that there should be some sort of an interactive way so that when people pass one of those memorial signs for uh, city, you know, named squares, that they should be able to sort of access. And I believe that's actually been set up now. There's a mm. link off the um, uh, one of the Cambridge sites where you can actually look these things up. And a, like a virtual person comes up and does the phantasm <laughs> thing, well, this is my story? No, no, no. I think it's a little simpler than that. But uh, well, a lot, so, uh, Some percentage of those squares has no record. Of who they but are. That's all right, you so, know. But at least if they can get a good uh, a good collection of them right. together, I think that would be just really great. Yeah. So, um, all right. Um, but we digress. But we, well, we that's, that's, <laughs> Susanna, if you haven't figured out that digression is what we do, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, there. Are, I wanted to do sort of a pitch for everybody to become a local historian. But are there any other particular? Uh, uh, Things that the historical society, you know, that you'd want to focus yeah, on. Yeah, tell us more. I mean, I know you do the, there's periodic meetings. Mm -hmm. I think some of these may be members only, but maybe not all. Um, but you know, this is the, the society's involved in some pretty interesting things. Yeah. Well, we do a lot of different programs. Most of, almost all of which are open to the public. There's only maybe one or two things a year that aren't open to the public. Um, and the next program we're doing uh, is coming up in April, uh, and you can find out all about it on our website. Um, but it's actually it's a walking tour that was developed by an intern. Um, it was her idea, and she developed the whole thing. Uh, and it's called Closed Kitchens, uh, and it's a walking tour of the sort of dearly departed restaurants of Harvard Square. So oh, the restaurants that uh, everyone has a strong memory of, and but but are no longer there. So the yeah. Worst House, the, the blacksmith shop, uh, or the window shop. Um, you know, up the until tasty. the tasty, That's of course, uh, the tasty. and um, you know, we hopefully will have a couple of staff members from a couple of these restaurants who will be there to to greet people and tell stories of, of what it was like. You know, this being a, this actually reminds me. We've sort of contributed in our own ways to mm -hmm. uh, the Cambridge Bicycle Committee right. uh, in both the spring and the fall of every year. Do a thematic so. ride. I think sometimes just a, the bow tie ride, sort of right. riding out the shape of the city, but oftentimes it's been 
you know, thematic. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one that had to do with musicians living in Cambridge. There were, you know, historically, uh, you know, so you, you, you bicycle past Yo-Yo right. Ma's house. By the way, his <laughs> son used to be my uh, course assistant All right. one time. Yeah, cool. yeah, Stephen. He's a member of the society. Yeah, oh, good, 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 <laughs> good. Um, um, th there was another one, I think, on um, transportation history yeah. of the city, which I, I gave a spiel about the canals down in mm -hmm. East Cambridge for that. My favorite one was the political history of Cambridge, right. <laughs> where I think I talked about Tip O'Neill uh -huh. and the temperance movement right. as part of that one. You know, but you know, we're, we, we, there's sort of this um, little smallish universe of people who are, <laughs> you know, kind of conspiring to inject history into <laughs> the minds of every Cantabrigian <laughs> here, and, and the bike rides, which actually will draw 200 plus people. Yeah, no, I was, I was one of the speakers at the the last one, which was uh, about candy, or it That's was right. culinary. Yeah. So it was uh, the sweet and savory. That's it. Uh, yeah. And part of it was, and the historical society, we we've done a whole series of different tours over the years. We do lots of different walking tours. One of the tours we did a couple of years ago was on candy making in Cambridge. Yep. And oh, so there's I would now love to see that one. Uh, a subdomain on our website, which is all about candy making in Cambridge. Uh, and we've also done a culinary history of Cambridge, which has 30 something different sites from Julia Child's house to um, former house, uh, you know, to the old stomping grounds like uh, um, Nick's Beef and Beer. I remember Nick's Beef and Beer when I first came Nick's here. Also known Nick's Beef and Ear? Yes, Beef and Ear, Nick's of course. Beef and ear. Well, you know, the, this is the gay days when That's it wasn't all sort of, you know, snazzy restaurants. The new they temple were, bar. But they were, they were like regular places. You could just sort of go for burgers and beer and whatever. Right. Even even Central Square, it was, uh, what was the name of Ken's Pub? Before mm. it ran into some sort of shady <laughs> dealings. Um, you know, it was actually sort of a great thing just to have some of these sort right. of regular places. We loved them. So both of all these things have been tours of ours. They now all live on on our website as sort of subdomain sites. Yeah. Um, and you can find Good. them and check them out. Um, and so the next one we have coming up is, is this Closed Kitchens tour, um, which I personally was advocating for the title Lost Lunches, but... <laughs> <laughs> That less, goes with you were, out, less you were outvoted by the, by the board. <laughs> yes, everyone said that's a bad idea. <laughs> um, I'm trying to find something here. I can't find and uh, then uh, coming up a little later on in June, we're going to be doing a program on the history of transportation, actually, oh, which I think you might. I absolutely, about. I'm there. I'm, sign me up now. <laughs> You know, do I have to give you anything? Or, you know, just, just sign me up right now. I'm, <laughs> no, I'm also a member, a board member of the Middlesex Canal Association, mm -hmm. which is a historic preservation group for the historic Middlesex Canal. So oh. always interested in transportation related things. So how do people find out about these events? Well, uh, we have a very active Facebook page. Um, we also have a, a website which is updated pretty regularly. And what's, um, that name? what's the name of that? The website is cambridgehistory.org. Uh, and Facebook is, I think, just Facebook slash Cambridge History. Um, and both of these, if you're following us on either of them, uh, you should stay pretty well up to date. Uh, as well, we're on Twitter uh, at Cambridge HS. Um, so those are all good ways to sort of to stay tuned. Um, all of our, pro or not all, but the vast well, majority of our programs. People just call you at home. Well, I'm not at home so much. You can call me at work. You can just uh, go up to his house, ring his bell. <laughs> you can certainly call us at work at 617-547-4252. Uh, I would, you know, maybe not so much at home. Uh, but um, or you can accost me on the street. There we go. But well, don't I do, do it often. Yeah. Right. Well, anyway, there was one other thing I wanted to mention here tonight, which is that... Uh, you know, in addition to digital resources, you know, we do have a nice library, mm -hmm. and there are books. You can even pick them up on, on uh, eBay, uh, um, which I think uh, if you really have an interest in Cambridge history, you should at least be from, you should learn about them. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just going to just random, semi-randomly throw out the names of a few of them. For me, the sort of I didn't bring a copy of it here, but uh, if you really, really want sort of the the, the main item, it's. The History of Cambridge by uh, former city clerk uh, Lucius Page from 1877, mm -hmm. which is, if you look at later histories, uh, you often see that referenced wildly. Mm -hmm. it, it was just the history of the day. How does it end? <laughs> it never ends. <laughs> uh, it, it's actually, I mean, it's, it's remarkable. And the genealogical yes. information in the back is just exhausting. You've read it too? Yeah, I mean, you can't not. <laughs> yeah, I actually, you know something, that book is also available as a searchable uh, digital PDF. I actually have it on a, on a disc, too. It is, uh, although it, it's available through Google Books. Um, yeah, that, that as well. But the Google Books scan uh, made an error, and so yeah. like the first 200 pages are missing. 
Oh boy. Well, I've it's got good the you noticed. I've got the full <laughs> disc. So yeah. Now another one, which is actually where I. And someday heard... when we're having a slow show, we will read it to you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> it does read like a 19th century history. So. My entry into this actually came with a book called *The Cambridge of 1896*. Uh, 1896, which was the 50th anniversary volume, which is written, as they say, in the, in the it was edited by Arthur Gilman, but it says written by many hands or something <laughs> like that, because it's really a compilation of contributions from the person who ran the water department, very historical people. There were some of the people who were involved with the no license movement or mm -hmm. featured heavily in here. But if you really want this incredible snapshot of a city proud city in 1896. This is the book. It was, mm -hmm. It's a really a great jumping off point. But there are many so is other... there one for every year? It's just that no, year? No, this, this was special. That year? It was the 50th anniversary of the oh. incorporation of the city. Yeah, they so had, the city was incorporated The city in used to put out really uh, comprehensive annual reports every year, mm -hmm. but this is different. This mm -hmm. was really a real it's celebration. It's a story. Right. Yeah. It was, the, uh, it was Cambridge 50 years a city. Mm -hmm. 50th anniversary came out the same year. And I actually was earlier, I was uh, mentioning uh, Professor Thayer from Cambridge, uh, 75 years a city, mm -hmm. all right? And as a feature, it was 10 no license years. Mm -hmm. Some of these things, you know, you, maybe you can get them off Google Books. I think I've seen all of these things for Google Books. So go check it out. So all of you watching, you can vote. Whenever we have a slow show, <laughs> vote on which one of these you want us to do. Now, in more modern times, there are many we could do from Tip O'Neill's books or whatever, but the one thing I put in our last little minute here I just want to mention, um, this, is, this is not just all about the buildings, but the Survey of Architectural History in Cambridge was produced by the Cambridge Historical Commission. Mm -hmm. And it's a, this is just the very first of the uh, volumes. I think this was made in 1967. Uh, and what is Cambridge, that? Uh, right? But they were on all the various parts of uh, the Survey of Architectural History of Cambridge. Uh, and there were five volumes. The, this one actually in East Cambridge was actually reissued in the late 80s. So. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, 